I'm gonna talk about uh, experiences, results, uh, and knowledge transfer uh, <coughs> concerning uh, measured, uh, usage of geophysical uh, measuring devices, laser scanning, LIDAR, and unmanned aerial uh, vehicles. Uh, from 2016 uh, to today, uh, at the <coughs> Department of Archaeology and Institute of Archaeology of uh, the University of Sarajevo. So, from that period, uh, in the last six years, we have done uh, 50 plus different archaeological uh, research uh, sites from prospection, uh, various geophysical surveys, a few systematic explorations, and uh, at least uh, on half of those, we have used uh, some sort of geophysical survey or remote sensing methods. Uh, most of this research uh, was done by the Institute of Archaeology, but it included students attending programs at the department. And I will say a few words about that after I introduce what uh, we have available, what we were using all this time, and a uh, few of those results. So what do we have? A uh, PGI drone, a resistance meter, a uh, flux plate, a uh, gradiometer for uh, magnetic uh, fields, ground time checking radar. Uh, for laser scanning, uh, we have a total station with a built-in uh, laser scanner, uh, Topcon Image Station uh, Series 9. And recently, we have obtained LiDAR, Valadyne VLT-16. Uh, which we have uh, made few versions of mounting uh, for stabilization uh, during usage. So, drones, easy. We have a DJI flame wheel with built-in uh, uh, recording, visual recording device together with remote control and display, and of course, uh, our present student who uses uh, those under supervision. What's it used for? Mostly for uh, <coughs> area reconnaissance, so for, uh, for identifying uh, features that are not visible uh, on the ground level, and uh, for obtaining media for uh, various presentations uh, for the journalists, which is an important uh, thing in our archaeological work, not only that uh, we make data, but that we properly present it to the scientific and to the public at large. And uh, in this case, uh, these white spots uh, here are georeference points. So uh, this picture, uh, this background can uh, be used for report uh, for reports. Uh, for proper placement on uh, uh, on outcat maps, uh, we have resistance meter from Geofcan on the basic level. So the most basic um, equipment uh, that is out of the box. So as it was ordered, uh, we use it. We did some. Uh, uh, slight uh, modifications uh, with the device itself, so it is more uh, capable of detecting the, the change of uh, um, uh, change of uh, humidity uh, in various soils. But we did, uh, for one occasion, we, uh, one occasion we did a slight modification to spikes. Uh, this meter needs two uh, on mobile probes uh, needs two points for proper uh, recording, uh, and uh, in situation where tombstones, uh, in this case at Jewish cemetery, uh, are more than twenty centimeters high, uh, we need a bigger spike, half a meter, a meter high, so. You can properly use this uh, device. And result, well, we did find what we, uh, we were recording. These white, uh, tr um, right, uh, right 
Squares are uh, tombstones, uh, georeferenced positions of tombstones, and uh, we did find anomalies that correspond to the tomb, uh, to the tomb themselves. So, so group various grouping of uh, tombs uh, and uh, stones used for building it. This here is not our result. This is what the Germans, uh, German uh, team from Kiel, has uh, made uh, resistant has made geophysical uh, recording of site conduits. This here is our, uh, this here is uh, what we have made from with resistance meter. And it's about this position. So we identified more or less uh, the same things, except this. And uh, we did two campaigns on conduits. First one, uh, we were digging approximately here and here, and we did the geophysical survey of this meter here. And uh, due to this anomaly, we have excavated that area, and we found this. A Neolithic uh, floor, stone floor on the side that wasn't uh, recorded, at least on that side, uh, <clears throat> previously, with a sun buckler, dog, uh, ceramics, uh, stone tools, and one ground uh, stone axe uh, uh, on the surface. We also have uh, a geoscan uh, for uh, measuring uh, magnetic field, but I personally haven't used it, so I would just, I'm just uh, presenting what's available. But what I have used is this uh, ground penetrating radar. Uh, we have used it uh, during research on Matsuya, the UNESCO uh, heritage site uh, of Stetsi. These and this anomaly are corresponding either to this road, to the table and uh, uh, signboard for a uh, national monument, uh, already known uh, group that uh, which was added, which was found when this road was being uh, paved. This corresponds to this uh, here statue, but these are unknown. And until it's excavated, it's just an anomaly, anomaly, anomaly in um, space. Again, uh, this is total uh, uh, totalization uh, with built-in. Uh, laser scanning, uh, which we used on the site of uh, old town of Bialania, uh, Bosnianski Petrovac uh, in northwest of Bosnia, and we got this result. Each of these points is georeferenced uh, thanks to the, uh, it being from a total station that is known, but uh, let's just say it's a rather long process. Because for each of these sides and inside, uh, a new position had to be uh, made for this to be an accurate representation. So it uh, lasted two, three birthdays. And this is more or less the result with, together with excavation that were done uh, at the, the occasion. The other site where we used this uh, was in Teshen, with Bastion Tower and the uh, courtyard in front that was also geofence. Uh, major, let's say, if, uh, even though this is not like process, uh, the data that we get is useful uh, out of the box. So it can be uh, given to the conservation expert uh, and others. And recently, we have obtained LIDAR, Lodan, and uh, well, we just got, uh, got the buck. So we needed to put it on something. So this is what we first came around uh, uh, in making it. It wasn't okay, but it still had some issues. So we combined it with uh, with longer pole for uh, so we can uh, survey a more area because uh, one of the reasons of why the lidar. Uh, goes uh, airborne is so it can get more 
that uh, uh, with one goal. Uh, sorry. And this was a bit more stable platform than previous. But this is our most stable so far. It's uh, mounted on a backpack. Uh, it's stabilized on the backpack. But this is the main uh, thing that stabilizes it. And it compared uh, to images from this and this, this is near perfect uh, uh, data. So, so with the least amount of errors and uh, need for uh, uh, taking new data. And this is something that we uh, we have about a year or so. Uh, whole system, and this is literally from uh, from uh, last Thursday. This is what we have uh, recorded near Travni. Uh, this fall with uh, second generation, uh, let's call it, of uh, um, of uh, platform. As there is a cross section of it on the posters. This this are stones, and these are actually layers. As you can literally see, it, line art is so accurate that only even on raw data, without any processing, you can see differences in layers. This is the site itself with and without forest coloring. And this is a uh, sim that uh, I visited literally this Monday with actual recording from that uh, from Monday. What's the biggest advantage of this, even though it's not, uh, it doesn't have absolute coordinates, so it doesn't have access uh, except only golf trigger or whatever. Um, whatever uh, world uh, the coordinate system. In relative sense, it gives accurate dimensions. So this this dimension is same uh, on in program as in uh, reality. But now for something completely different. Don't do this is list of various colors from 15th to 18th century uh, have one, actually two things in common. First, they all theorized based on ethnographic evidence, based on antiquarian data set, that stone tools were older than metal tools. And the other thing in common is they, uh, each of them rediscovered the real. Each of them made a discovery, but neither of these had knowledge, be it from poor um, networking in that period, small publishing volume, or even language barriers. So Italy, England, Italy, France, England, uh, etc. So most of them. The reason I'm bringing this because all of this nice everything, but one thing that is more important than the devices that are used. So oh, and Ole Worm who uh, Ole Worm who didn't uh, quite make uh, combination to jump that uh, tools from New World are same as tools. From old world, which he thought that were they were fairy uh, narratives or geological. Sorry, so sorry. Uh, all of these are less important than actually this or this. 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 At each of our excavations, each of our research, the Institute of Archaeology, 
we insist that students must use every geophysical device. Drones, everything that's available to us, that they get the recordings, that they, they do own, their own, let's say, interpretation, that they do all the work that's needed for setting up, even, even flying. Under supervision, yes. But without that, uh, they, if they don't, Interprets, uh, if they don't think of all of these tools as something that's basic, that's something in their basic tool set, not some specialized, not, uh, not something specialized that they may never use. If they think that this is something special, then in five, ten years, they'll just get in position that they'll go reinvent the wheel again, even though they have experience with everything. Thank you.